Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the mini PC I'm using to control my rig. It is the Eagle 5S from Prima Luce Lab. Uh, you can see behind me the dashboard here, which I will talk about in a bit. So I'm currently using this. Uh, it's been a few months now, and so far I am loving it. It is on my uh, remote observatory rig, which is uh, working really well so far in Utah. And so the reason why I wanted to make this video today is because I have two rigs, one with a Nook and one with this beauty here. And to me, as of 2023, it makes much more sense to get this instead because the Nooks uh, are much more annoying to use, uh, to set up at the beginning. And then since COVID, the prices went up like crazy. So we'll talk about this in the next few minutes and you will see how it's attached to my telescope. So if we look at the different Eagle computers available, there are several different options. Uh, you can either get the old version, which is the Eagle 4, uh, which of course is still fine. You can get the budget one, which is the Eagle LE, or you can get the newest ones. Uh, we have the Eagle 5S, which is the one I have, the Eagle 5 Pro, which is better than the, than the S, and you also have the, the best one so far, which is the Eagle 5 XTM. And if you're kind of confused about all these numbers and all that, you can go down, I believe, or just open one of them and you will see a, a chart here which shows you the power difference between each. So you have a, a regular mini PC here, for example a Nuke or something like that, um, and it shows you it has this much power. Uh, but co when compared to the different Eagle uh, computers, even the, the lowest ones, so the 4 or the LE, are still slightly better than most mini PCs. Uh, and then of course it goes up exponentially um, so the 5S, the one I have, is right here. Then you have the 5 Pro and 5 XTM, which honestly I don't believe would be that uh, worth it. I, I don't know, I'm actually wondering why someone would um, need this much power uh, when it comes to imaging remotely. Maybe if you do processing remotely, I mean right from the Eagle, uh, but if you don't process your data on the Eagle, I, I don't know why you would need so much power. But I'm curious. So if you do have this one, let me know um, what you use it for. Uh, but for me, the Eagle 5S is more than enough um, for every task that I have. And if you go down, also you have a, a table here with all the features. So it shows you the difference between each uh, when it comes to features. So here, for example, you have the RAM memory, processor, SSD disk, uh, and then you have uh, some uh, locked or unlocked features. For example, the inclinometer. Uh, which I have, uh, is not in the previous versions. So on my first rig, I have a, a, a Nook computer, which is $549 or $719, so maybe around like $600 or maybe $500. If you compare it to the lower um, computers they have, so the LE, which is $845, I honestly feel like I would get this one, despite the price being a bit higher, because setting up an Intel is a bit more annoying, especially if you have to do a converter for the power and if you have to buy a Wi-Fi uh, router, which is what I had to do. So if it was me back then, um, the Intel Nook used to be much cheaper than that before COVID, but now they're more expensive. So I, for me, it's a no-brainer. I would go with an Eagle, um, either the LE or something more recent if I have the money. But to me, it doesn't really make sense to get a Nook anymore. So if you don't know what came in the box, uh, we made a video a few months ago showing you everything that came in this box here. So it comes with all you need to start using the Eagle 5. I also show you guys how it looks like in hand, so you can see all the physical aspects, for example, the antenna, the threads for the mounting bolts, as well as all the ports around the Eagle. So uh, go check it out for sure. It's, I think it's a very interesting video uh, to really know what to expect when you buy one of these. So once you have the Eagle, make sure you download everything you need on it. I'm talking about all the drivers, all the software uh, and all that. Uh, so for this, you will need to connect it to a TV or any screen and you should connect a mouse and a keyboard to it so that you can use it uh, you know, as a regular computer. And make sure you don't forget to download anything. So right now I am uh, downloading everything I need on the Eagle. Uh, so right now it's plugged into the TV with the HDMI cable 
and plugged into the power source. Um, that's pretty much it. So when you turn it on for the first time, you will see this screen, which is a dashboard. Uh, you might have to go down into the settings and change your resolution so it fits your screen. Um, but here in my case, I just uh, minimized this dashboard and then you have a, kind of like a Windows um, window. And here I just went onto my Wi-Fi from home and went on Google Chrome, which was already installed. And now I'm doing what's the most annoying part, which might take me a couple hours or so, um, is to download everything I need, uh, which is Dina, all the drivers from QHY, from CWO, from my mount, uh, and make sure I don't forget anything. So that's the most annoying part, but once everything is done, the Eagle should be ready to be installed on the setup. By the way, several apps already come pre-installed with the Eagle. For example, PHD2 or CardUCL and a few others. One of them is Play, which is made by Prima Luce Lab. It's a nice software that was designed to be very, very simple uh, to connect all your equipment and start imaging right away. So it is optional and I have not used it because I already have Nina and happy with it. But if you're a complete beginner and are trying to just image quick, you can use this as a plug and play kind of software. And uh, I think it's really well designed. On the main Eagle Manager window, you can also rename each port to whatever piece of gear you plan to connect there. Uh, I'll show you why this is useful in just a few minutes. So it's very simple to attach to any setup. I attached mine like a guide scope, so on top of a dovetail on a telescope. So that's probably the easiest way you can attach this, but there are many, many, many different ways uh, you can attach the Eagle. So let me do a quick walkthrough for you guys of the Eagle once you connect to it. So this is uh, my dashboard. So the Eagle is just a, a Windows computer. The screen you see here is mostly a, a program that allows you to tweak and uh, customize and actually use the Eagle. So if I just minimize this, you will see behind that is just a typical Windows computer. So I have all my uh, normal Windows programs. I can go online. I can um, use anything Windows-wise. But here we have the Eagle itself. So. Uh, this is called the Eagle Manager X, and this is how you can uh, control everything. So first, uh, visually, on the left here we have the uh, GPS coordinates. We currently have none showing. So this telescope right now is installed at the observatory, and the roof is closed. And I think it's because of the roof, um, but also at night it doesn't really show anything either. So I'm guessing it's because how the roof is made, it kind of blocks the GPS. But either way, I never really cared about this anyway because my mount uh, tells me the GPS coordinates anyway. So I just always ignore that. So connectivity, this is how you can connect to the Eagle uh, using this uh, these numbers here. Uh, if you want to use your phone or whatever you want to locally connect to it right away with a built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, if not, you can connect to any other Wi-Fi, so your home Wi-Fi or an observatory Wi-Fi, and this will be the second number here. Down there you have the inclinometer, which is really cool. I don't really look at that often, but I do if I think there's an issue with how my mount is pointing. So here, for example, it's at about zero degrees, and that's normal because my mount is currently parked in a zero degree uh, position. Um, but if I'm imaging, this will change to like 45 degrees or uh, 60 degrees and all that. Here we have the power consumption. So this is useful if you uh, have a lot connected to it and you might be worried about your battery levels and all that. I am directly connected to the power outlet at the observatory, so I don't really care about how much I'm consuming here. Um, but it's, it's nice to have anyway. And also if you go here, you can change um, this to battery, for example, and it will show you uh, how much battery left you have and all that. Motion detector. Uh, I'm not sure why it's going crazy right now. I'm, I'm guessing someone is probably walking in the observatory right now, um, but normally this would be very quiet. The eye is really cool too. Uh, this calculates how dark it is. Right now, I believe the observatory is probably closed but with some light going on, so it's showing uh, some random numbers. But normally at night, uh, you would be able to tell how dark your sky is using this number. Uh, quickly on the left here, you can see it's grayed out. That's because I don't have this uh, add-on. This is something you have to buy uh, to calculate the humidity 
and um, kind of control your dew heaters. Then um, lastly we have the ports themselves. So uh, as you can see there's a bunch of ports, so many ports. Uh, here on the right are the main power ports, uh, so you can uh, rename and uh, connect whatever you want to them. I only have my camera and my focuser to connect to these ports because uh, my mount is directly plugged into the wall, so I don't have anything else here. But you can simply click to turn them on or off, and it will show you how much power it's consumed when you turn them on. Um, so it's very really simple, just one click, up, on and off. On top, uh, let's go here for example, uh, you have uh, the USB ports, so there's also some here and some here, but you can also turn those on and off, which is really cool, and rename them. So I can turn my camera on and off. For example, if I have some USB problems, I can turn this on or off and uh, kind of cycle them. Same for the power here. So I don't have to physically go there and unplug it. I can just turn off both USB and power from here. And lastly, you can tweak the advanced settings here if you want to. I only changed this to reboot so that in case I turn off my uh, computer accidentally, I can just make sure it reboots automatically. And you also have a dark mode here. Uh, if you have a computer on the field, you can use that so you don't ruin your night vision. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you just minimize this, like once again, you have just a regular Windows uh, desktop and you can do whatever you want, install whatever you want. And it's really cool. So in the end, uh, I've been using this for a few months now and so far, no issues. I really love it so much. And uh, there is so many advanced settings you can go through and you can make it your own and customize everything you need about it. Once again, I think the Eagle 5S is more than enough for me and for most people. I don't really know why you would need something stronger, something more powerful, unless you constantly maybe use a Sky X or uh, processing on the actual computer. Uh, but for just regular like PhD2 or Nina and all that, this is more than enough. Besides that, I go through this a bit more in depth in the Galactic Core Season 4, which is all about remote imaging. So if you guys want to check it out, there is a link below. And there's also a link for uh, the different kinds of Eagle uh, computers that they have. So go check it out and I'll see you guys next time. Guess guys.